Hi, good afternoon, everybody. And a very, very hearty, warm welcome to this session on uh, the future of emerging technologies. Uh, I guess we can begin with uh, begin the session with uh, Varun sir uh, giving us a small input from his side. Uh, Varun ji, maybe you can just uh, introduce the whole session and then I will take it. Okay, good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, so I hope everyone is safe, uh, either at their homes or at their workplace. Um, I must start with um, mentioning that Inca Robotics has chosen um, a wonderful topic for the webinar, uh, Emerging Technologies, and the fact that they're in this exciting field of robotics, uh, I'm sure... Um, not only the youth, but um, everyone uh, is interested in a, a topic like this. Um, and I think it's about time that uh, India takes over the uh, robotics field in as much as um, in the space field, we have proven to the world that India is not behind in the space category. Um, in terms of cost, in terms of you know getting to the moon or getting to Mars, wherever we've gone. But at the same time, again, robotics, uh, uh, playing a very important area. Um, I think, uh, once again, so Inca Robotics has chosen a very good topic. And I'm sure this session will be interesting for everyone who is uh, viewing this webinar right now, uh, in terms of not only what the future is all about, but also um, how robotics can help all of us during these uh, troubled times uh, by maintaining social distancing, um, and also how um, um, the future will be shaped up by robotics largely. Um, having said that, um, um, let me just give you, a, uh, you know, take a couple of minutes in mentioning about our partnership with Inca Robotics again. Uh, we've worked with Inca Robotics, uh, uh, we've been working with them for a long time uh, in several fields and several areas. And we're glad to partner with them on the electronic hardware side as well. Um, a brief about us, uh, Sahestra Electronics is a, is a two decade old organization. And uh, as part of the Sahestra group, we are into uh, several manufacturing activities, right from manufacturing uh, automotive dash cams uh, in the automotive segment, to manufacturing motherboards um, and memory products in the IT segment, um, electronics manufacturing on the whole for um, uh, different industries, including manufacturing of printed circuit boards, which is the base electronic product for every electronic device that we all see. Um, Sahestra Group is by and large engaged in exports as well as supply to domestic companies. And we have uh, uh, our customers across the globe, including in um, one of Sahestra's arms, uh, which is Sahestra Sambhav Skill Development, is the skill development arm that is partnered with Inca Robotics. And together with them, um, we hope to be able to impart skills and train the youth of this country so that we can actually become Atmanirbhar not only um, in, in manufacturing, but also in design and development, which is actually the future, so that we have our own products, our own designs, our own innovation, and we stop depending only on um, imported products. Okay, coming to the specific topic, uh, again, as I said, very interesting from robotics. So robotics is thing, uh, which is overall part of the largely used word automation. Um, robotics or automation, uh, as I just said some time back, is definitely going to be the future. When you talk about industry, uh, you know, we hear this term nowadays quite a bit called Industry 4.0, which basically means that we automate the processes at industries to such an extent whereby 
there is a lot more automation on the shop floor and even in the systems that we deploy. Automation will be in forms of software or let's say ERPs that we use. Also automation, software automation in terms of the production lines that we have, they give us data automatically with combining our production lines with, with softwares again. And on the hardware side, there will be robots or what we actually call in the industry robotic arms, which will be used um, in some places instead of manpower and in some places together with manpower. So while a lot of people, they get worried about the fact that automation or robotics means loss of jobs, not at all. That's definitely not going to be the case. Uh, and a good example is look at software. The biggest companies uh, of the world who are building software, they need hardware. Um, Apple software is spoken about a lot, but without the, without the exciting device that they have made, which, which requires hardware and which requires people to be there, their product would not have been successful. So maybe 20 years back, we were all worried that software will take away all the jobs. Not at all. And similarly, automation or robotics will not take away the jobs. They will complement and they will create new openings. For example, in, um, in machine learning, in AI, in programming, in maintaining these robots, in servicing the robots, in completing the line of these robots. So a robot will be able to do, let's say, out of, you know, on a scale of one to 10, let's say it can do eight out of 10 activities, but it cannot do a couple of things. And you would probably not want to invest on the robot or on automation 100%. So um, these robots, etc., will work together with human beings in getting the activity done. So I spoke about industry 4.0, that's one area. The second very important area when we talk about warehousing, we talk about e-commerce companies, there is a huge demand for automation and robotics being used there. Uh, for example, we pick up the largest e-commerce companies like Amazon, Flipkart. They all are trying to automate their systems so that not only the error rate goes down, but at the same time, the time to pick up material from a shelf and get it to a package reduces. Now again, uh, the automation there is the simpler systems of you know, barcode machine and barcode labeling, but getting more and more complicated is the use of AGVs, the automatic guided vehicles, which is by the way, a category of robot. You know, let us not all confuse robots only with humanoids, uh, what we have seen in movies, but these are all robots. Anything which, you know, uh, any machine which does the activity that we were supposed to do by itself is a loosely, is a loose definition of a robot. So not only, uh, you know, scanners and barcode readers, at the same time you have AGVs, and then you also have systems which a lot of robotic companies are nowadays looking at what they call the pick to light or pick to put systems, where a robotic arm or a, or a piece of hardware comes in, picks up something and puts it into a bin. Other forms of automation which have already been in place earlier are conveyorized systems where you're able to get um, your product from uh, a particular location to another location, or you are able to get it from a particular floor to a different floor. So these are all forms of um, uh, automation and robots at warehouses and e-commerce companies. Then uh, another very important area, which I'm sure Inca Robotics will show you um, an actual product, will be robotics such as the humanoid, which we all know, which is starting to become popular worldwide. Uh, even some banks in India have introduced uh, humanoids um, who will be used at restaurants, will be used at banks, will be used at a lot of service companies, will also be used at airports as, as automatic kiosks, uh, kiosks which will be interactive, talk to you um, and solve your issues. 
um, and so you learn more that uh, learn more about that probably in the next uh, session with the other speakers. Um, another area where uh, you know we talk about uh, robots being used largely, which is already in use a lot, but we probably are not aware of that much, is the medical industry. In the medical industry, to avoid errors during operations and during surgeries, the use of robotic arms or robotic systems has been already there for a very long time. And that use in medicine, in the medical industry, or in the pharma industry is going to increase rapidly. So, um, the few areas where um, uh, robotic systems will be in use and um, um, the future uh, will definitely be a lot of automation, use of robotics in different forms, as I mentioned, uh, as robotic arms or a humanoid or as machines which can do a lot more. That is definitely the future. And uh, I would um, uh, suggest all our viewers today to embrace these technologies. Uh, we are probably going through a, a very, very serious time in terms of the pandemic. But I must mention that nothing lasts forever. And so this pandemic, whether it takes six months or it takes 12 months, it will go away. So this is the time where we should make the best of it. We should learn such new skills and new technologies so that when all of us resume um, lives and working in the environment that we use, that we are all used to the pre-lockdown situation, we come up with new activities, new learnings, and we are able to make use of whatever we have learned in that period and differentiate ourselves from the pack and um, not only be able to get employed uh, at companies, but at the same time, um, use robotics in a fashion whereby it increases our own productivity as well as the productivity of the organization that we work with. So thank you very much. Um, all the best to all the um, uh, speakers, all the best to Inca Robotics for this particular webinar, seminar. And um, um, if there are any quick questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Varun, for that uh, inspiring uh, talk, you know. And uh, before I begin with uh, my session, let's see if there are any questions, you know. Uh, this is a very, very, very technical question. So one minute, please. Yeah, uh, we have a question here which says, when I made obstacle avoiding mobile controlled hero HF Deluxe bike, Google Assistant Controller, Home Automation, a Room Cleaner, Smart Dustbin, people think about me that he is a kid. Okay, uh, let me um, answer this, at least my perspective on this, and then I'm sure you all can come in as well. Yes. Success of any innovation, any design, any product is a mix of several factors, right? One factor definitely is luck, which probably is not in your hand, not in our hand, but luck is a very important factor. The other factors are, for example, something like timing, the way you market it, uh, the product that you build, who do you get on board, who do you show the product to? So in everything that uh, this particular person has mentioned in the question, let me take the example of one of the items that they've said, a room cleaner. Now, there is a very popular company in the US, which is known as iRobot. iRobot makes automatic robotic vacuum cleaners, which is very, very popular in the US. Okay, almost every house in the US has that product. I think so. I also bought it and I, bring, I brought it to India. And trust me, when I bought it about, uh, I think now four years ago, leaving day one where we all played with it because it was an interesting digital gadget, that's about it. 
after that one day that we used it, it did not get used for the next four years. Why? It did not get used because in the Indian context of the way we live, the way our conditions are in terms of we probably need to sweep our house or clean a house every two hours, that product cannot be successful. So iRobot has no market share in India. Now, iRobot is not even present in India. So probably they're not selling it for the Indian market. They probably need to build a product specific for the Indian market. I picked up something for the, from the US market and got it here. So probably it did not work. So coming back to what uh, you know, the question is, that look at robotics, which solve the problems of this country. Look at something which solves the issues here. Um, let's not only make a robot because it's fashion. Let's not make a robot which uh, you know, people should you know, say, oh, what a wonderful thing you've done. Solve a situation or a solution or you know, bring a solution which actually works for a niche market that you're targeting or the masses. And as I said, there are other things required. You, you need to have the right timing. You need to have the right market. You need to have the right customer. You need to have the right financer, etc. So if those people who are saying that, you know, this is a kiddie thing you have done, I personally don't agree. It's probably the wrong people who you have shown it to. Um, and, and maybe it's not the right solution. So look at making something which solves the problems here. Um, you can do automation in terms of, or, or use robotics in terms of, uh, for example, again, in the COVID situation, the way we are, um, you know, checking the temperature for every individual, the way we are dispensing the, the, the uh, liquid that we're all, uh, you know, washing our hands with, um, look at automation on that, on those lines. That's probably the need of the R and, 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 introduce more machine learning AI in those products so that you go to the next generation. So people will do, let's not get worried about people. There will be people who will try to bog you down because they don't want you to succeed, but have confidence in yourself, have confidence in what you're doing and be realistic. And slowly, slowly, when you move ahead, you will come up with something which will succeed. If you have your sights set out on it, and if your your thoughts are crystal clear, it will succeed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Varun, for that. Yeah, uh, just to add our perspective as well. Yeah, I, I believe in terms of all, all of the devices that the, the, this person has created, it is really wonderful in terms of you know the kind of uh, diversification that is there in all of the tools. Yeah, and also the, the thing is that. As Varun mentioned, the people who have seen this is uh, basically very naive in terms of what can be done and how it can be expanded into the different areas as well. Because all of this is basically trying to make uh, the life easier of us as well as uh, for others as well. So these are things that will come into the society. It just keep coming as Varun just mentioned in the COVID situation. We have these automatic dispensing hand sanitizers coming in. We had a lot of other devices like the AGVs coming in into the hospitals or the hospitality sectors where it works on the obstacle avoidance detection mechanism yeah, where, where it can be used to you know, uh, give medicines as well as uh, uh, food to the patients who are suffering and in isolation wards. So these kind of technologies are coming. We will have to adopt it into our markets as well. And you will find that these kind of things will be developed in, by every people uh, in, in the, within the society. Yeah? Just like when computers came in, uh, we, we, we said that people will lose jobs. We said that people uh, will be uh, trying to understand that. But this created a big job market for us. Yeah? Uh, Tata and Forces all had a lot, a lot of people and they have centers across the major cities within India. Yeah, so, so the robotics is something that is going to shape the future as well uh, in terms of this kind of the same mindset. You know, uh, so right now we are not there, but I believe within the next 10 years, we will see a big robotic market within India. You know, and that's where we are heading to. So with that, let us, I think, uh, 
job uh, of the presentation uh, as well. Yes, Varun. Yes. Small point to come in. Um, you know, while you were talking, I I realized that um, to the person who asked this question, as I started with, you need to have the right mix. Um, so, in terms of right mix, is also have the right partnerships, have the right platform, and maybe this is the best platform. Join hands with Inca Robotics. They will probably be able to give you access, and they are definitely not thinking what you've done is kiddish. This is a step. You don't you don't come up with brilliant ideas, you know, just on one day. Um, for years together, people thought that Steve Jobs at Apple is a fool. What is he doing? And look at you know how things worked out. Now I'm not saying it will work out for everyone. Everyone is trying, but keep at it. Join the right platforms. Have the right partnerships. Speak to the right people. That will give you the confidence to move ahead. So again, all the best to everyone, um, and all the best for this uh, seminar. Thank you so much, Varun, uh, for being a part of it, and thank you for the inspiring the, the talk. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, thank you for sharing your inputs. Thank you. So I guess we can now head on to the main presentation, the core presentation. It would really be nice if I have an idea of what kind of a background all of you come from. Are you uh, engineering students? Are you working already? I mean, what kind of a mix have we in the school? Right? It would be really nice if I could have some idea on the same. You can just put it on the chat box so I, I have a fair uh, idea of uh, you know what kind of a mix we have here. All of you are welcome to put in your uh, comments. You know, uh, are, are you people working somewhere or are you students? What kind of a uh, crowd have you? Just to have a quick idea, you know, it would be nice. I, I know some of the people, but I am guess there are a lot of people I would not know. So if you can just put in your comments. Yeah. You can mark out uh, the comments in the chat box. Okay. Oh, wow. We have somebody from the defense. Amazing. So that's one area which definitely has a very, very, uh, you know, pivotal role in terms of uh, robotics and uh, artificial intelligence, as I understand. Uh, so I presume most of the people uh, in this room are actually uh, working, if I'm not sure. We have a student. Finas is okay. Finas, we have a student. We have somebody who's mentioned that you're working on a robo which uh, would help doctors during COVID-19. Amazing, wow, that's, that's really uh, something to be very proud of, you know. And uh, like in hospital instruments, trolley, which can be controlled by mobile. And I am adding one more thing in this. This will follow our doctors like a human follower. Amazing. This is very close to the technology we are planning to develop, right? Okay, uh, we have somebody from the solar industry, amazing. We have students and we have people who, have, uh, who are a mix of uh, the corporate world as I understand, you know. Okay, um, so guys, today, uh, what we're gonna talk about is, uh, we have somebody from the academic side also, really, really impressed and proud of people. Somebody who's a PhD scholar, Ms. Seema, Ms. Seema Tamil. Okay, great, great. Ms. Minakshi, who's into academics, um, Mr. Heman Jain from the solar industry. Uh, we have Vikas, who's just completed the 12th grade, and you would like to take AI for your future study. Amazing. Because I think that's the best decision you could take at this given point. You know? Okay, um, so for the benefit of all the people present here, I would like to begin with a very, very short video. It's just an entertaining video, and then we will move on from there. I'm sure you would be able to connect with this movie. But, uh, uh, but it's important for me that you watch this movie so that I connect with what I'm going to speak about after the year after. So enjoy. So well, well. Uh, are we able to connect with this uh, scenario back in school or college? A lot of times, a lot of things that are taught to us, you know, probably is so theoretical and absolutely not applicable in the real job scene, right? So this is exactly what our educational system right now looks like. 
So it, it is time that we, you know, orient our syllabus, orient our education to such an extent that it is applicable in the real life scenario. What is the kind of situation we are all in right now? Especially our students, you know, our, our friends from the 12th grade, uh, especially in this room, I would like to point this out to him uh, and the other students in the room as well, that we are in a vicious circle right now. The students are in a vicious circle right now. And what is this vicious circle all about? We are being taught a syllabus, which is almost like six to seven years redundant. All what we are learning right now is based on a syllabus which is redundant and out of scope. It is not in line with the trends right now. What is the result of this? The result of this is we are not able to apply all what we learn in the classroom, that's one. And because we are not able to apply what we learn in the classroom, what is the final impact of all this thing? The final impact is we are not skilled enough to be employed in industries. So there is a big gap in skilling and the knowledge that is being imparted at school or college. So what happens is we have a big population, a big mass of people who have all the qualification in the world, who have all the degrees in the world, but unfortunately are not employable. And this big gap in skilling is something we have to really address seriously and to make sure that our education, our, uh, all our trainings are imparted and done in a way that people are able to become operational at a job on day one. When we take engineering, when we take, uh, when we, uh, you know, join professional courses, we do it with so much of zest and so much of interest, thinking, yes, we will find a good job, we will secure ourselves, and yes, we are going to really, really make a difference and impact. But the reality is when you get into the mainstream is where you realize all this is just a sham. You are not able to really, really get into a job from day one and be operational on day one. Every company, however big a company it could be, they have to spend a whole lot of money to train people who join jobs because they are not skilled enough to fit into the kind of uh, job culture or the kind of system that the company follows. So what happens as a result, you know, we are all in a situation where we learn a lot, we have all the degrees, but are not able to apply. And this is a scenario we get to see most of the time. All of us have learned differential mathematics in school and college, right? But how many of us really apply differential mathematics in the real work scenario? How many of us are able to apply all our knowledge on day one and be successful there without any training? It is a very, very rare case, right? So it is very, very important that we, uh, our system does a reality check and makes sure that we get our courses and systems in such a pla place in such a, at such a level that children are able to find jobs. And there, this gap between skilling and education or knowledge is kind of minimized as far as possible. There is a recent study which was done by the World Economic Forum. We know any data which comes from the World Economic Forum is a very, very, very authentic data. So I have a data which we checked out recently, which says that nine out of 10 jobs within the next few years is gonna be digitized, which means 50% of all the jobs available right now is gonna be automated. So what message does that give all of us? It gives us a very, very simple uh, understanding that, uh, that it is very, very crucial, very, very important for us to learn skill, digital skills, to learn all these skills which are required to fit ourselves into that right job. So it is very, very important that you keep pace with technology, you upskill yourself because upskilling is the key word. With, you might have all the degree in the world, but doesn't matter if you're not skilled enough to be able to handle those jobs and those uh, technologies which are required to, uh, you know, uh, get to those uh, get those jobs running. So there is a slide I would like to share with you from the World Economic Forum. Trust me, this scenario could be fast-paced now with the advent of COVID and this, you know, big pandemic that has hit us. I feel we would be in a position now wherein we will have to, we will have to learn these skills a lot faster 
because it is uh, time that uh, this automation process will get faster now. It will, it will be more fast paced than what it was expected. This particular report was published in January 2020, way before the pandemic hit all of us. So it clearly mentions that in the next 10 years time, more than 50% jobs will be changed by automation, would be taken over by automation. So are we, do we need to worry all of us? Do we need to worry? Do we need to worry that our jobs are going to be taken away by automation and digitization? To an extent, yes, but at the same time, there is also good news. The good news is this is just the right time and just the right opportunity for you to pick up all those skills which are required through this whole process of automation. Because no machine, no robo can automate itself. It does require human, human support to build it, to operate it, and to maintain it. So we have a whole plethora of opportunities out there all we need to do is just go out there, upskill ourselves, and you know, get all those skills that we require to be there. In fact, there was a recent study which was done by IBM, and this is a very, very interesting study that we came across, you know, wherein uh, IBM, IBM, IBM through its uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, series of um, you know, surveys came to the conclusion that knowledge at this given point is expanding at the rate of 11 to 12 hours. Can you believe it? There is this book, there's this beautiful book written by Mark Rosenberg called The Critical Path in which he had mentioned that knowledge expands in every 25 years. But where are we today? We are at a point where there is knowledge bombardment every 11 to 12 hours. As for what IBM has found out in the year, 2020, that is this year. And what does this particular graph indicate? It indicates that we have to really work hard. We have to be really fast-paced to, to be able to fit ourselves into this sector, this fast-changing world. So it is important that we gain all the knowledge, we upskill ourselves and get to this technology which is going to take us far in life and we don't, don't really need to worry about things. When man started working, you know, we, we, we had a very agrarian background. We were in an age where man was a farmer. Physical skills were given more importance as compared to any of your, uh, you know, intellectual skills. <coughs> Sorry. And as life progressed, you know, from an agrarian worker, man moved to factories. And that is where the advent of industrial revolution, the first industrial revolution happened. And a lot of people lost their jobs because it was very, very important that these people would be able to do uh, to handle machines in factory. A lot of people could not do that, which is what led to a lot of people losing jobs. That is why it's called the Industrial Revolution. And life became fast-paced because production increased. There was a lot of impact on the whole work, work culture and the way things were being produced. And from there happened the advent of computers. Computer got this, uh, invented. <coughs> I'm sorry. And when computers came into our lives, it was the knowledge era where people were supposed to know how to tackle machines, how to uh, tackle program, programming and things. And from there, now today, as we stand, what is given most importance are intellectual property. It is not just if, uh, enough to know computers or programming, you need to be really, really creative and add on a lot to the world. Internet is a big revolution that has happened and it's called the third industrial revolution, wherein uh, the technologies are like uh, you know, Facebook, social networking, programming, Java, Python, all these things are happening right now. Now this is not enough guys. We are very soon gonna hit the fourth industrial revolution, which is called the information age. And this is the age where we really need to upskill ourselves. And those are the technologies which are really, really going to take charge of the way the world works and progresses. <coughs> and, and, and I think here uh, we have, you know, the kind of technologies that will take over in, in the new digital era. Yeah, we have blockchain, we have system integration, we have uh, analytics, we have automation intelligence.
intelligence, machine learning, internet of things. We have the autonomous robotics, which Varun spoke about as well, you know, at the start. And we have the cyber security and the human assisted robot as well. You know, uh, we just wanted to hear from the people in the room, you know, in terms of which of these technologies do you think will be, uh, you know, very crucial for us to succeed uh, in terms of, you know, uh, in, in terms of how we uh, do things seamlessly. Absolutely. You know, I just, just want to ensure that, can you put that in the chat box, please? No, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, we would love to hear from you in terms of what you think. Yeah, so people, yeah. so which, which of these technologies you feel are really, really going to make uh, an impact on, you know, our, our future uh, work culture, workforce? Are you, are you guys able to hear us? Uh, just ping us and say, yes, you can. So we know we are all in the same page. So, so any response, guys? Yeah. So, finance is telling AI. AI, okay, excellent. Excellent. Anybody else? Anybody else? So, what, what would you feel would be the ruling technology? Finance, you're right. AI is going to really play a, play a big role. You know, it already is, I would say. And uh, it's bringing in a lot of uh, changes in the way, uh, you know, companies and industries work. So you're absolutely right here. Absolutely. So, so what do you think? Uh, uh, well, I think all of these are quite crucial, uh, Amit. And uh, of these, uh, I think system integration is very, very important because that's where all these technologies can be put together to build something you know, which is more uh, bombastic and more value added. Somebody, Seema just mentioned machine learning and internet of things. Excellent, Seema. So nice to hear that. From you. A voice is not very clear. Okay. Is that, is that better now? Uh, Varunji, is that better? I hope I'm uh, a lot more clearer now. Okay. All right. So here, so happy to hear that, Seema ji. Okay, great. I'm happy to hear that we are uh, much more audible. Now, um, all you wonderful people here, I mean, as we see, these are the technologies which are definitely will rule the forthcoming times. So Vikas here mentions that AI will rule the upcoming. Yes, you're right, Vikas. I would be taking uh, you through a brief snapshot of all these technologies mentioned here in a short while from now. Robotics, Menachi says robotics. You know, great, excellent. So, so happy to hear your responses. You know, uh, all of you are right. All these uh, technologies are going to uh, take a, a big shape in uh, the way the world works and looks in the future. And I will take you through a brief snapshot of all these uh, shots. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll just watch a small video. Uh, before we move further. And I want you to see what this is all about. This is the basic application of technologies in the world today. This is how technology is supporting agriculture, as we can see. Yeah, you can see uh, uh, precision farming in action here. Absolutely. Yeah, so that it results in higher yields of crops. That's Inkar Prithvi, which is used for agricultural purposes. Um, any dirt of manpower can be covered through this technology where you, we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you, uh, we can give uh, manure and fertilizer to the soil using a drone service. This is how you can get your house painted if you're not able to find people to paint your house. This is where technology comes into play. Look at the awesomeness of the whole uh, technology out here. This is a 3D printing technology which
which uh, this is an in-house product uh, manufactured at our Dubai office. And this is uh, using the 3D printing technology also. Look at the precision with which you, know, you can create images from just a piece of paper, you know, where you have a drawing which can translate into a prototype of any kind that you would like. How is that? Beautiful, isn't it? Now, this is the real-time use of this very same technology for 3D, 3D printing. Huge buildings without much manpower. See what they the magic they create from zero using this technology. This is the industrial arm or robotic arm, you know could support with uh, you know lifting things or doing the routine mundane heavy duty jobs you know, which can be taken care of by these machines Would you see how technology really, really impacts our life? All this technology is to support mankind. And uh, we, I mean, we can use it to the best of mankind if we are able to apply these. And to apply these, we need to upskill as you've just seen, you know. Now, what's the next thing that we need to know? Now, to upskill, you need to know which are these technologies that you really need to upskill on. And this is all going to support the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, as you call it. And we all have to be future ready. And these are the technologies which will get us ready for the fourth industrial revolution. And we have you know, put it in a particular sequence, starting with digital marketing, going up to 3D printing, robotic uh, process automation, RPA as you call it, cloud computing, blockchain, and of course, artificial intelligence. Uh, Amit, would you like to add a couple of points here? Yeah, sure. I think in terms of uh, some of the comments that came in, yeah, mm -hmm. you could see that artificial intelligence is very important. Yes, very, very and, and it yes. has a crucial piece in terms of uh, future jobs as well. Absolutely. We will yes. see more jobs opening up in yes. artificial intelligence Absolutely. as data scientists, as also in terms of uh, autonomous cars and, and in AI and yes. AI technologies. Yes. You will see many industries yes. adopting this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Robotic process automation is also very crucial. Right. Yeah, uh, where, wherein we can see in terms of uh, banking sector, for example, very, very a lot of backend processes will be automated using, using this, this, technology. this technology. Blockchain is again very important and critical because you will see that the, you know, the currencies will be moving in in terms of blockchains, which is more secure. This transactions will happen, uh, and uh, people will be needing to understand the technology in the near future as well. Absolutely. I see five years from now, you know, currencies and everything will move into a blockchain technology. Absolutely. So it's very important. Yeah, I saw, I think the video it tells it all in terms oh, yes. of 3D printing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, let's proceed in terms of next thing. I think there's a question which we can answer towards the end as sure, well. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Can we know more about it? Yes. yes. We, 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 we have a specific uh, dedicated section for question answers and we will come back to your question on that. You know? Now, I'll be talking very briefly about each of these technologies for the benefit of uh, those people, especially the students in this room who do not know much about these technologies so that you have a better understanding of, of what is expected of these. The next technology I would like to introduce is the first one here called uh, digital marketing. Now, how many of us here do not use, I would say, WhatsApp, Facebook, Gmail, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn? What are all these technologies based on actually? The technology that all these uh, uh, you know, social networking sites and all these apps are based on is basically digital marketing.
Today, it is so easy for us to be known and for us to showcase our talents in, this, in these given times because we have this technology to our benefit. Now, if you have a small creation which you've done, you can reach out to the whole world on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or all of these uh, you know, platforms because you have this amazing technology called digital marketing in your sites. You know? So uh, all, all the technology, even a common man today who is using this technology to his benefit and to be connected with the whole world and for a whole lot of transactions as well. So you see this is definitely uh, an, a, a technology which is on, I would say, right now, and it is only going to go cases. You must have seen, you know, when you go to some, some of the sites, you see uh, an automated chat box, but it's not a human being, but the system interacting with you. Now, those chat box are also based on this technology called digital marketing. I would run a very quick video, which is very, very short, for you to have a better understanding of what I am mentioning here. Digital marketing is the promotion of products or brands via electronic media. By using digital marketing channels and methods, you can analyze your marketing campaigns to understand what is working and what isn't, typically in real time. While the internet is the channel most closely associated with digital marketing, other channels are important. Digital media is everywhere. Consumers can access information wherever, whenever, and however they want it. And they are no longer influenced by just what you say about your brand. In fact, consumers are more likely to be influenced by what others say about your brand. The reality is that people prefer brands that they can trust, companies that know them, communications that are personalized and relevant, and offers that are tailored to their anticipated needs and preferences. Digital marketing can help you deliver all that. So that's a little bite on digital marketing and you can see it is all over the world, all over the place, all over our fingertips. We can't do without it, right? Now what's the next technology we're gonna talk about? This is a technology I'm so very passionate about. It's called the 3D printing technology. We just saw a video which have showcased how important and how uh, crucial this technology is and how it helps us create prototypes and real big time projects based on this technology without much human intervention. Now, people, I would like to bring your attention to this small robo on the left-hand side of the slide. This is an in-house product we, we, we at Inker are so proud of. It is called the Inker Alton. Now, this is a humanoid robo which was created with the sole purpose of educating children in the classroom. And this robo is an amazing teacher. There, there might be a point in future where you will see more of these trainers or mentors who are robotic, humanoid robots in the classroom. And this is something really, really exciting. And people, let me tell you why we have placed this particular robo next to a 3D printing picture is because if you look at all the outer parts, the whole, the entire mold for this particular robo is uh, created in-house. We have a 3D uh, printing uh, department which is doing the entire mold for this, um, you know, uh, Alton uh, based robot. And this is being done in house. The prototypes were produced, the, this was worked on, and this project is live right now. So you will very soon see a whole lot of humanoid Alton robots in the classroom. Am I right? Yes, right. Um, yeah, so that is what this amazing technology is all about, you know. You don't see a complete picture there because we're still working on it and you will see a whole lot of these robots in the classroom and you can get all your students excited when it reaches our classrooms. You know? And it's a very interactive robot which can teach easily. Amit, would you like to add anything here? Yeah, a, a couple of things uh, in terms of uh, 3D printing. Yeah, uh, it's basically the, the kind of materials that you use for 3D printing can vary as, as you guys saw in the video. Uh, from uh, plastics into cement materials as well, you know, uh, and, and that's where, where different kind of uh, 3D printers will be used from practical applications to industrial applications. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
let's go into the next technology absolutely well i may not want to play the video for this because you've already seen it so just yes. move uh, yes. head on to the next uh, technology directly you know now the next technology we ha have we have here is called rpa you know we keep hearing about it all the time and i was really really excited when i got to know what this rpa is all about you know i got to know i i was carried away by the word uh, robotics and i thought there must be some humanoid robots standing there doing things you know but no rpa is basically a small software and it is such an amazing software it has the capacity to integrate a whole lot of processes together whole lot of mundane you know long processes into a very systemized organized process you know now this is one technology like amit had mentioned earlier it is big time being used in the banking sector because there are a lot of routine mundane works which uh, and transactions which happen which are taken care of by this particular technology Anything you would like to add here, Amit? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that this technology is more in terms of you know in terms of backend works that can be automated. UI path is basically the software that is uh, that is Blue helping. Prism, yeah, that's another one. That's think, another one yeah. which is helping in terms of these kind of processes. There's a huge scope for job opportunities in this uh, space. In this particular space, where wherein um, you can see in the banking sector, in the hotel industries, you know, a lot of these applications, uh, you know, wherein uh, that's where they do the customer satisfaction, you know, in terms of having all of these processes automated, so that you get all of your, uh, you know, uh, email reminders and things like that. Wow. Yes. 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 Uh, all of that is using this robotic process automation, Absolutely. wherein it tracks you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in your user journey, Absolutely. and and that's where it brings in a different customer experience as well. So people are using uh, robotic process automations nowadays to ensure that customers are satisfied. The the, the mundane tasks are basically automated, and they reduce labor there and workload dependencies on those labor. Yes. And a lot of these tasks tasks in, in specifically in um, uh, even in uh, the hospital. Hospitality industries are being done using these kind of these kind of, these kind of applications. What an amazing technology! Yes, really. and uh, that's where I think it's evolving, and there's yes. a lot of people required, required to do these to, to do these kind of uh, tasks as well. Yes, and uh, uh, and that's where. There's a lot, lot of job opportunities being opened Absolutely. up in this space. Yeah. So, people, I hope you're listening to this. There is amazing scope available in this RPA tools uh, space. You know where you should learn this technology, and it is really, really going to impact a whole lot of workplaces on, uh, on a big time, uh, on a big basis, on a tall basis. You know, I'd like to show you a small video which would just highlight what we just spoke about. What is RPA? Robotic Process Automation, RPA, is a technology that allows a computer program or robot to replicate otherwise manual processes in an automated, repeatable and reliable manner. Just like a human, robots can open emails and attachments, log into applications, read databases, collect data, follow if or then decisions, fill in forms and perform calculations. RPA solutions allow organizations to do more with less, minimizing risks through increased visibility and audit trails. Typically, robots operate around three times faster than a human worker. How could RPA tools benefit the treasury? Robots are best suited for tasks that are repetitive, rule-based, and incorporate structured digital data. In the treasury space, RPA could be used to automate a number of labor-intensive day-to-day processes, freeing up high-value employees' time for activities such as problem-solving, exception handling, and troubleshooting, payment processing, invoice management, Reporting and reconciliation, in particular, lend themselves to RPA. Similarly, robots could be used to assemble, analyze and organize the vast amounts of data treasurers require to produce accurate and timely cash forecasts. So that was some insight about RPA and what's the next technology we're going to introduce here right now. 
a very, very amazing technology called the cloud computing technology. People, there was a time, you know, when we had a, a whole box which used to collect data for, for all the transactions, all the message exchange which used to happen in the offices. So what was happening was this data collection was becoming a big task and it was difficult and colossal to place all these data boxes. So what did technology come up with? What is it that our you know, technical geeks came up with? They came up with an amazing technology called the cloud computing. Now, what is cloud computing? It is basically a virtual uh, data storage uh, center, you know, where all the travel, you know, message uh, messages that you, that you transfer, all our systems are actually connected to this one virtual uh, storage space called cloud computing. And this is where um, any messages that you send through your WhatsApp, through your emailing, through any kind of database, the uh, messages that you send, it all gets collected and it uh, gets stored in a virtual space called the cloud computing. Now, what is the best uh, thing about this particular technology? This, the best benefit of this technology is it, it has a very high speed. You can retrieve data whenever you want. You can store as much of uh, data as you like. There is no limitation on the space. You can do have an absolute black backup of all the data that you save. And what is more, you know, all this uh, uh, is done through software integration at different, different, different levels. And the best uh, uh, thing I would like to tell here is that the data, a lot of people ask me, what about our, uh, the security of our data? Yes, all our data is end-to-end -end, uh, uh, encrypted. So it is the data is uh, secure, it is high speed, and the storage capacity is definitely not a worry at all. So this is a great, great virtual storage space that technology has offered us, and we don't have to really worry about where, how, and you know how we secure our data and where is our data going. I have a small video here on this, which I would skip because we're short of time, Amit. Anything you would like to add here? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next best technology that we have here, which is my favorite these days. Amit knows about it. It's called the blockchain. Now, this blockchain is an amazing technology, which is basically nothing but it, it, it is basically, a, you know, what, what you call a decentralized um, a ledger that we have, you know. It is absolutely secure. Nobody can hack it. Nobody can steal it. It is actually, if you talk of blockchain, only one percentage of the population knows about blockchain. But would you know the value of transactions which is happening through this technology today? It is 19.9 .9 plus lakh rupees. Our demonetized value of currencies was just 15 point some lakhs. But this technology is already has 19 point some lakh rupees in circulation through this particular technology. Everything is going to be cryptocurrency tomorrow. Everything is going to be, uh, right now money is digitized, but there will be a point where everything would be based on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. There, you don't need any physical transfer of money in coming times. And this is such an amazing technology. It is secure. Nobody can steal your data and your data is not held by any one particular company or any one particular entity. Like for, for example, right now, all, all the uh, messages that you send through Gmail is under Google. All the messages, uh, news feeds that you share on Facebook is, you know, is, is under the Facebook server. But this technology offers you an absolutely distributed and decentralized uh, data keeping where nobody, nobody takes charge of your data. It is absolutely end-to-end -end encrypted and absolutely secure. And this is one technology which has a, a colossal, a massive uh, uh, opportunity, I would say. And anybody can do this technology. You don't have to be an engineer or a you know a technology-based person. Anybody would need to understand this technology. Just as all of us need to understand internet, this is the internet of the future. So you all, we all need to understand what blockchain is of, uh, about because it is going to impact all the industries across the sector, be it hospitality, healthcare, a book of uh, commerce and finance, uh, talk about any any particular sector, blockchain, blockchain is the in thing. And it is very, very important we understand this technology to the core. And this is just the time to learn. Amit, anything you want to add here? 
Uh, I think I've just covered it in my earlier, earlier talk. Okay, yeah. okay. So there, there's a small video which I'm going to skip again because I've already mentioned all what is there. Let's move on to the next technology that I have on mind. Yes, artificial intelligence. I think Amit, you should talk about this. Because... Yes, uh, th thanks, Praveena. So here, here in terms of artificial intelligence, yeah, uh, it's very important that we understand what it is, yeah, and where where it plays a role, mm -hmm. yeah, wherein uh, it, it's it, it's 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 a place where you know a lot of things can be automated. What what whatever we are uh, doing. Bit, yes, your voice is actually breaking. Yeah, can can you hear me now? Yes. Is it better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so what I'm telling about artificial intelligence is basically in terms of um, in terms of the importance of artificial intelligence is that this is a space where it's still being created. A lot of things are being created in the space where uh, things can be automated. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in terms of auto autonomous dri driving cars are being created using AI technology. Yeah. In terms of uh, uh, we have a lot of customer services attendants in hospitals. Yes, chatbots and things yes. like that. Yeah, Tesla is making the self-autonomous yes. car as we're looking Amazing. at it. Yes. And others are following suit on that as well. Yeah, there's a lot of image and face recognition software is using AI technology. Yeah, uh, this is this is going to be tracking each and every one of us in the future Absolutely. in terms of where we are moving and how we are moving. And this is going to be used because of what happened right now because of the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wherein in terms of tracking a person is be becoming very difficult in case the person is being affected by corona, COVID-19. COVID, right? COVID yeah. yes. So these kind of technologies will come in yeah, mm -hmm. where, where humans can be tracked to that certain extent. Absolutely. And also in terms of ensuring that, you know, uh, it, it starts creating by itself its own data. Absolutely. And, and that's where, you know, the, the this technology is evolving into, yes. wherein it requires that it learns by itself and understands, you know, uh, what we are thinking and brings out new use cases so, so that it can think on its own. You know? yes. uh, we, we're not there yet in terms of the technology, but we will very soon get there. And that's the potential once the power of artificial intelligence will be unleashed, Absolutely. once it comes into that kind of a scenario, which Absolutely. it will very soon. You know? Absolutely. Um, and th th that's all what I wanted to cover in terms of artificial intelligence. In fact, Amit, I have to mention it here. I feel so proud being associated with uh, an organization like uh, Inker, you know, where we have a whole lot of think tanks. And trust me, we uh, Inker gives its uh, people a free hand, you know, and we have a very dynamic team in the uh, R&D sector and they are uh, de developing uh, a, an automated, self-automated car as I could see, you know. And I remember uh, Amit when the COVID, uh, this pandemic began, Inker uh, team had developed a hands-free sanitizer, which is also uh, supplied to a whole lot of hospitals, you know. And I think that was a great uh, social initiative that, uh, you know, Inker had done and uh, it yes. is very, very proud uh, the way artificial intelligence is being applied in our uh, R&D uh, labs you know, to come out with some of the best, you know, uh, trend setting, uh, you know, products uh, down the line, as I would say. And the best thing about Inker is we don't believe in keeping knowledge to ourselves. We believe in uh, knowledge diversification, you know, and uh, there's a whole lot of trainings that uh, Inker also does apart from product mm -hmm. development. Okay, people, now to the next technology. There's a small video which I would skip if you don't mind because we are very short of time. This is the next in thing that you all get to see also. Most of the classrooms, as we understand, is applying this technology, which is uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. And this particular technology can actually give life to a whole lot of things, which is only on our minds, you know. And uh, it, it gives us a space and opportunity to experience these things alive through technology. And uh, this is one technology which Inker also promotes in a big way in its classrooms. And the students, whatever they're learning, you know, they get, get a, a kind of opportunity to touch and feel things, you know, uh, through uh, technology, through the uh, uh, augmented reality and, uh, you know, virtual reality. And I have seen a lot of excitement in the classroom, you know. 
uh, when it comes to this particular reality. In fact, even uh, we're, we're talking of the healthcare sector, I know a lot of doctors uh, conduct, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, operations using uh, this technology as a, as a, a dummy operations. I would say using this technology because they can uh, actually see things which are actually not there and uh, understand how best technology can be applied in the real life scenario also. Uh, Amit, uh, would you like to throw some light here? Because I, I think this technology is also a big thing in these given times. You know? Yes, I, th I think this technology is more of a, a simulation kind of a software exactly. that, that we are using where it gives uh, you know, a 3D uh, animated and view to, to, to the students. Yes. Yeah, and it's being used right now mm -hmm. in, in terms of the educational sector yes. as well. Where, where, where you know uh, it, it plays a major role in terms of how you know students can learn things that, yes. and visualize things yes. in a different manner yes. because uh, because we believe that once students are able to visualize things it will, it will have a higher retention rate for them absolutely and, and that's where a lot of softwares are being developed in the yes. space as well that can help in this uh, in, in this kind of uh, uh, domain yeah, in terms of ensuring that people are able to uh, Amit, in a better way. Yes, sorry. Yes, can, can you I'm hear? Really breaking. You are uh, far from uh, your, uh, I think, the mic. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Okay. So, so what I was telling is uh, th this is a, a, a space that uh, or, or a domain which has more uh, implications in the educational sector, uh, wherein students who are not able to see, especially in rural areas and places like that, this technology, uh, you know, can help students to, to visualize things and help them understand things in a better fashion because it has 3D stimulated, yeah, so people can see and feel how it looks like, you uh, yeah. know, uh, and, that's where, and, and that's where we help uh, with this technology as well, you know. Um, especially when it comes to augmented reality you can see things in a, in a different view Absolutely. in terms of how how things can be approached as well yes yes okay uh, i think let's do you have a video for this uh, i do you know yes please so, yeah. let's play that yeah i would make uh, it more uh, clear these days we spend a lot of time looking at screens computers smartphones and televisions are a big part of our lives they're how we get most of our news, use social media, watch movies, and more. Virtual reality and augmented reality are two technologies changing the way we use screens, creating new and exciting interactive experiences. Virtual reality, also known as VR, uses a headset with a built-in screen that displays a virtual environment for you to explore. These headsets use a technology called head tracking, which allows you to look around the environment by simply moving your head. Augmented reality, or AR, is a bit different. Instead of transporting you to a virtual world, it takes digital images and layers them on the real world around you. This is done through the use of either a clear visor or a smartphone. So with VR, you could explore a world full of dinosaurs. But with AR, you could see those dinosaurs moving through the world around you. Both of these technologies are growing at a rapid pace and being implemented in a variety of different ways. Surgeons are using VR to practice highly technical surgeries before operating. Businesses are using them to give consumers virtual tours of products and locations. There are even apps that can use your smartphone's camera to scan and translate a foreign language in real time. As they continue to grow, VR and AR have the potential to greatly change almost every industry. You'll want to keep an eye on them to see how they might soon affect your job and potentially your everyday life. So that gives a better insight into this whole technology and you can see there's so much more for us to look forward to, right? Now, a small ride into the Inker uh, space where I want you to look at what we are doing. Thank you. 
So all you wonderful people, that was a quick run into the kind of things that we do here at Inker. And uh, thank you so much for your patience and for all the time that you've spent with us uh, for now. Uh, I'm sure you would have a whole lot of questions for us and uh, we would love to hear from you. I hope we've been able to give you some insight into all the technologies which are going to impact our life. In the future, some of them, these are already impacting our life right now. Can we know more about ABB Robotics, Solar, Photovoltaic? Yeah. Robotic solutions for coronavirus 19, COVID 19. Yes, I think, yeah. I think, I think uh, we can expect more questions to come in. So, people uh, in the group, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to raise it at this Absolutely. point of time. Yeah. So, uh, we're looking at the uh, first question is uh, can we know a bit more about ABB's uh, robotic solar photovoltaic? Uh, so this is basically a, a, a solar uh, energy kind of uh, renewable energy kind of machines that is cre being created by ABP and they're using oh. robotics to create it. Oh, they're using robotic arms and things like that mm -hmm. to create these kind of technologies for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so the precision, the accuracy mm -hmm. and in terms of uh, human errors can be minimized when they're using uh, robotics to create these kind of technologies. Absolutely. Yeah, so right. that's where these kind of ABP is also using uh, robotic arms to do these kind okay. of things right. because it has it has to have precision in it uh, in terms of how they are putting the panels and everything. So it's being used, yeah, in terms of uh, robotics as well. Yeah, uh, Very interesting. we'll see more of it in terms of uh, other kind of uh, applications as well. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, so that is where ABP uh, arms are helping in terms of the process. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Nitin did ask us one more question a while before, which was, can we know more about humanoid uh, robots? Yes, uh, so humanoid robots are c uh, certain kind of robots uh, yeah, that can help uh, in terms of mm -hmm. being a personal assistant kind of a thing. Right. It can, uh, it can replace With the machine. Uh, Device. Yeah, device. sorry, sorry for that, Deepa. Yeah. Uh, so, I hope that's better now. I hope it's better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so humanoid robots are a kind of robots that help in terms of uh, you know replacing a receptionist or a kind of um, uh, you know uh, a, a security kind of a person. Uh, it can be used for uh, uh, a person comes into a lobby or kind of a thing they, they, they welcome right they, they can welcome the person and understand from them where where and if the person has an appointment or, or any other uh, why that person has come into that office understand who is available and guide them to that kind of a particular person it, it can use uh, you know a, a line follower yeah or it can use a slam where a slam is basically it uh, it understands and does a 3d mapping of the whole area okay and it's uh, so it, it does that localization and it can take it to uh, from one uh, from the reception to the, any of the offices that is required right so so this is how it works yeah that there are a lot of these kind of humanoid robots that are available right now in the market yeah, uh, uh, which can be used uh, for commercial purposes. This one that you see behind us is basically a sandbot elf, yeah, which can be used as a receptionist robot. Yeah, it can do, it can be used as a personal assistant as well. So you, you'll see more of these kind of robots coming in uh, and being used in different places like hotels, office lobbies, and, and places like that. Okay. Uh, so, it can also be used as an entertainment uh, agent. You know, it, a sandbot can dance as I am. Yes, it right? can dance. It can dance. <laughs> it, it can avoid uh, people and walk. Yes. It, it, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. So it, it has multiple purposes. Absolutely. Yeah, but I don't think people will use it as a play or a toy yeah. right now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a very serious. Uh, it's, it's a gadget. very serious yeah. gadget and things. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Uh, going into Nitin's another question in terms of... Um, uh, this we already answered, the third one. Yeah. yeah. Basically, in terms of robotic solutions for COVID oh, situation. Very, very good question. Yeah, so, so we, we have seen a lot of applications of uh, these kind of robotic solutions uh, where uh, 
one of them was the automatic dispensing hand sanitizers that is being used and it is coming up and i think it is going to stay for some more time absolutely, uh, absolutely. because everywhere you go you need to have these kind of precautions precautionary measures taken yeah the other application is like the agv that we we wake one was talking about in terms of uh, you know uh, automated self driving vehicles automated self driving vehicles that is needed in hospitals or uh, in terms of hotels uh, which can have different applications or uh, a couple of applications that i can talk about right now is basically in terms of um, giving medicines or food to people who are in isolation yes, so that yes, it, it doesn't have to be given by nurses, nurses. Uh, so that the chances or probability of them getting contaminated uh, or being uh, being tested for positive is minimized and the other one is basically in um, uh, hotels or places where these isolation wards are there which needs to be uv or sterilized Absolutely. yeah by ultraviolet rays that's so it's very space. powerful rays so basically these kind of devices can go there scan the place and and then do the ultraviolet sterilization yes. and uh, then come out of it so it doesn't require uh, or it requires human yeah minimal human human intervention there yeah so these are the kind of robotic solutions that is coming up uh there are thermal scan scanners as well that yes, what can important. automatically detect patients without stopping them these kind of solutions are coming in yeah so these are some of the things where you can see that practical appl- applications are being used in this current situation we will see more and more solutions like this coming in the other one that was talking about cloud computing is yes. where everything in terms of learning is going online for school students and things like that so again a lot of robotics coming in there as well to a certain extent yeah uh, the next question is in terms of uh, which would be the energy which, which would, would be, be the energy, energy that would be used for the further technology rather, rather than, than solar, solar. Uh, i think solar is very critical yeah but at the, at the end of the day we see that you know um, uh, most of these robotic solutions that we have right now are running on power okay uh, which requires batteries yeah these batteries will last for some time lithium ion batteries are being used so uh, these are the kind of things that we are using right now we have to recharge or we we'll have to recharge or look at it in a different way yes. there are autonomous driving cars as well which is using the same kind of uh, technology as well so yes solar is not there yet in terms of the kind of energy that is being used for robotics Absolutely. but very soon once we know that you know we, we are in, in that level it will start moving into solar energy Absolutely. the potentialities will sink in ultimately you know can these robots work on hindi command i think yes i think i think it is it is multiple <laughs> languages yeah it must be for us a uh, lot of organizations where hindi is only a important language uh-huh. for us definitely uh, there uh, is a need of robots on their uh, institutions or uh, organizations also so this is the main uh, important question for uh, all of us in north india at least right right no i don't think language is a barrier uh, as far as this is concerned right it, it's all about embedding software at the end yes right? it, it's yeah. basically embedding the software in the end in terms of how uh, you know like a like a sandbot right now we have a sandbot here yeah it can, it can follow multiple languages yeah and hindi could be one of them yes yes but when it comes into coding for example i think the next question from anupriya kumari was in terms of code uh, you know Yeah. yeah can we write in c and c++ you know? yes uh, yeah. yeah c c++ is more of embedded c is where we can write languages okay yeah python is the most famous most famous language that is being used in terms of coding nowadays and that is the base for artificial intelligence uh, or basically data science as well uh, and, and that's where you know that will be the language that will stay for some more time it's, it's more powerful than c Yeah, okay. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so, so basically, that that's the language that we all should be learning, should be learning in, in case yes. we are going into that kind of a domain Absolutely. Absolutely. that is there. Yes. Yes. No, Finas has a question. 
yeah i think i think uh, sham is there also on the line sham yeah, can yeah. take up this question from finance yeah. uh, sham can you hear us yeah do you want to answer uh, give a brief on the iot okay uh, so uh, let me let me introduce the thing before uh, starting about iot so is iot everything is connected to internet internet of things that's the iot actually so uh, like for example uh, i'll ta- talk about iot using an example like amazon alexa if you go there uh, if you you can turn you can command the light fan and everything using an amazon alexa is an example of iot hello yes 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 sam we are we hearing can hear we you we can hear you go ahead <laughs> continue yes, yes. and uh, if you if you swipe swipe your card you you get a message the data is being connected to our server all these things are happening because of iot that is in the internet of things so uh, so the internet of things is coming in the concept of being smart smart refrigerator smart room smart classroom smart city everything all these things are based on the internet of things i believe and uh, and for uh, hello Yes, yes, Sean. We can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Yes, Sean. Go ahead. Sean, we can hear yes. you. That was yes. very nicely explained. Yeah. yeah. So that I IoT comes comes there actually in that where uh, the lot of devices can be connected in the internet and that it can connect it to the uh, uh, cloud storage. Cloud they can come the the devices can be communicated using the servers. and uh, uh that all these things are for uh, making our life more easy so i believe that iot is having a very big role after this uh, amid covid uh, situation because uh, whether you don't need to go or, or go for office no you can simply sit in home and do your work right all these things like uh, uh, these things and you can do all the uh, controlling your uh, system from your home uh like uh, using the team viewer or kind of applications uh, these things and you can control the office uh, the office uh, the component whatever devices are available in your office you can uh, control it from your home using all uh, all this uh, like uh, the, the technology called iot i think we can say uh, we can say all uh, iot is all about connectivity and integrated connectivity and i can say the smart connectivity between all the equipments all the tools all the softwares it calls iot yes 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 and and slowly we are getting there in terms of iot i can give you an example if i can switch on my uh, you know home lights before i reach home and and ensure that the ac is switched on that, that's where iot is heading to you know in Absolutely. terms of you know so it, it, yeah with the with the introduction of 5g uh, you know i think we will be you know very soon we will be very soon able to expand into that segment as well you know where, where we can do things using a mobile phone and a good connectivity Absolutely. yeah okay um, so i think finance i believe and we answered that question for you yeah uh so can we know more about humanoid robot hardware is it based on a microcontroller or a microprocessor uh, in in incur uh, robot have you have your own platform like embedded os yes uh, so um, uh, uh, so so hum- humanoid robots you know it, it works on um, it, it works on ros most of the platforms are built on robotic operating systems yeah uh, the one that we built the inker alten that you have seen is using um, this is uh, basically for students to learn and that is the reason why you can see the interior of that robot so these are using micro uh, processors the it was using arduino boards yeah uh, that, that was the brain of it mm-hmm. we we had also i think one of one of the controls we have raspberry pi as well so people can learn about it from that boards yeah it is using those kind of educational boards so that people learn about it before it starts going into industrial kind of boards yeah and uh, in inker robot uh, we don't have our own platform we we thought of doing 
a platform where people can learn about it yeah uh, so that it's not used for industrial purposes it's more for educational purposes and that is the reason why we built it using arduino and raspberry pi so people can learn about it but when it goes into industrial applications the boards will be of industrial scale because it has to be powerful and it has to do serve its purpose so based on that those boards can change uh, i hope that answered your question clint clint okay a uh, few more questions in terms of uh, is it possible to build a, a solar powered robotics from self battery charging it is possible it is possible even in terms of solar uh, solar power itself the, the technology is changing day by day the kind of uh, solar cells and things like that the size of it is getting reduced it's getting reduced yeah so once that technology is stable in terms of how it is we, we could we, they, they will be self battery charging machines that can be developed using wow. that there are in, in china that is still being used yeah it, it is there wherein if once a robot knows that it is under a certain level it automatically comes back into the docking station and it gets charged wow. using solar power so it is something that can be built in it, at this point of time there's a cost impact to it so people are not going with that option but very soon as i told you once we know that we can build uh, solar powered chargers uh, very uh, cost effective manner these kind of technologies will be started using Absolutely. we will start using those but right now it is not a familiar thing because, because of, of the, the cost, cost factor, because right? of the cost it's expensive yeah. yes we can say like directly we maybe we cannot use uh, solar powered uh, and other things but definitely it's uh, related to the solar activity we can charge the, their batteries we can use the charge controllers we can choose and uh, use the solar chargers for the charging of robot batteries definitely but it cannot be directly uh, through the solar panels in all the places in the robot maybe but we can use for the charging activity from the solar uh, energy yes yes exactly absolutely that that was very nice the answer Uh, uh, Amit Anupriya has asked us a question long back. Ma'am, is it much expensive? What uh, could you just uh, uh, tell us what you were referring to? You know, uh, uh, you know, I I don't know what uh, exactly. Uh, let's think that it is robots. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so, so uh, robots. Because she is also subsequently asked another question, which how is much? how much weight can robotics arms hold? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. so so there are robotic arms that is can be used for industrial purposes as well okay. which can weigh in, in terms of tons yeah. okay, so yes. depending on what is the kind of activity that the, the that arm has to do we have to ensure that we uh, are looking at robots or robotic arms with, with that capacity right or so those, it has to be designed it has to be designed or we have to look for those kind of specifications in terms of the workload that the, the, the robotic arm has to do it's yeah. requirement of uh, actually uh, the purpose uh, we can say the it's depend upon the purpose of the robot absolutely yeah, exactly exactly, exactly. exactly. Yes. you can say there are a lot of machines uh, which are based upon robotics and automation definitely and like as a jcb also uh, it can be uh, hold uh, tons of uh, weight and uh, some small uh, equipments are there which can be uh, used for only just 1 kg or half kg like that so it can be a uh, purpose based uh, activity uh, depends upon the purpose it can be hold from the uh, gram to kilograms and to the tons also okay. we have another question here amit uh, what yes. is uh, our industry the next problem we're going to face is uh, that of labor and uh, because most of the labor has gone back home so uh, is it possible that uh, you know the next workforce will be robots in the industry yeah i i, I think so i yeah. think so yes uh, robots will replace yeah as we said it will replace humans but at the same time humans will be doing other jobs yes. like what we mentioned in terms of rpa ai these kind of the jobs are where you you will see more roles going into these kind of Absolutely. jobs and manual labor will will be eliminated by the using of robots yeah yeah human because, beings would be doing more creative jobs creative right? jobs yeah. so, 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 so uh, depends upon uh, requirement it cannot be directly it's going for going to replace the laborers definitely but it will, will complement it will be increase the automation activity 
either in terms of machine either in terms of robot uh in the inside the industry definitely uh, it will increase the automation activities uh, due to the less manpower due to the less uh, uh, uh labors as of now yes yes so uh, atul kumar is asking is it made in india if these if you are referring to these sandboards these are from china yeah the the one that we showed you the inkar alton is that we made it in house it yes. is made in uh, india yeah um okay i think uh, we just have to wrap up in a couple of minutes yeah. okay uh, how has the generated more public interest in robotics so i think the covid is a typical example where people have started looking at robotics as That's a solution true. and it, it it in itself has ensured that we are moving ahead by uh, uh, by two years in terms of what, what the digital technology is yeah so that's where it has added value in terms of the covid has added value in us thinking of more about from a technology standpoint and it has made market awareness it has created a market awareness for us all of this uh, uh, situations actually which we are facing now absolutely absolutely yes, yes yes and and also the the last question is from agansha sharma can we know more about ar and vr technologies and their applications y- yes we we have specific courses designed on that and understanding where it takes us yes yeah uh, because it it has wide range of applications yes yeah. many 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 yeah. sectors especially you know? especially yes. when it came, comes into real estate and things like that you don't have to go and see the place you can send them this and they can send them the te- these kind of technologies and then they can see or visualize being in that in that space mm-hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah. okay uh, so so that's where uh, we, these kind of technologies will be working okay um uh, we have one last one, one question, question from uh, prakriti prakriti yeah, in terms of what are the key implications during the development of a social robot so yeah before we design anything we just need to understand what is the purpose that it needs to serve Absolutely. and then Absolutely. use the robot and the and the, and the kind of uh, uh, you know designs to uh, to uh, to design or come up with a solution that will implement that but the entire programming will be based on the purpose yeah, right it, it is based end. on the purpose that it has to serve Absolutely. so so that is where we need to start understanding the why you need a robot what is the purpose that it has to serve and how it can be served is done through the design build of it you know Absolutely. in terms Absolutely. of uh, because it can be flying a robot it can be like a drone it can be like a humanoid it can go underground it all depends on what is the purpose that it has to solve exactly yeah exactly. and in a better way uh, we can say that we cannot use robots uh, in a uh, unauthorized activities like that <laughs> we need to have uh, uh, some uh, plans also during the uh, preparation of the robot yes yes uh, okay uh, so we come to the end of it um, Yes. yes thank you for such an amazing uh, audience that you all made uh and i hope we have been able to do justice to the questions that you asked us thank you so much for your time and patience and uh, i would like to thank uh, sahasra and team especially uh, varun sir for uh, you know having given us this opportunity to collaborate and you know uh, b- b- get this webinar and all the future uh, futuristic associations that we're going to work on and uh, sham thank you so much for being there uh, and uh, i'm sorry i did not realize you were there for a long time you know till i'm called out your name thank you so much and um, i hope uh, uh, there are no more questions for us right yeah, uh, if if there's any questions or you feel free to reach out to us my my email id email id is already there, there. yeah yes. at inkarobotics.com so yes. feel free to reach out to us yeah uh, and once you guys are in trishur feel free to drop in to inka robotics absolutely yeah uh, you're most welcome yes. and thank you guys it was wonderful having you today yeah thank you so much thank you guys thank All you right. take care thank you ma'am and uh, mr amit surely uh, your uh, knowledge sharing is very good for us we are also getting uh, engagements in uh, this robotic uh, segment and definitely we are hoping uh, best relationship with inka robotics and definitely we will uh, serve uh, all the services related to robotic activities to the community
to do to help the community obviously and as per the requirement of the community absolutely thank you so much ankur and we'll be in touch of course sure. yeah thanks thank you thanks bye for bye. Uh, audience yeah. also thank you thank you guys thank thanks thank you sham see you. bye, -bye.